we're on the phone right now. Very special guest, Matt Baird from Spoken. How you doing, sir? I'm great. How are you guys this morning? I'm doing good. I'm a little disappointed because you were actually supposed to stop by the studio this morning, and I didn't even know this could happen, but I, I get an email from Eddie that the battery in your van froze solid. <laughs> It sure did. And, you know, I, last night at church, I asked a few different people about it. I'm like, hey, have you ever, because they thought, I had seen them the day before as well. We we had been helping out at church quite a bit in the past week or whatever. And they're like, wait, I thought you were leaving. Like, I'm supposed to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma on stage right now, actually. Uh, you know, this was last night at 7 o'clock. And uh, they're like, well, what happened? I was like, well, um, did you know that a, a car battery could freeze solid? And, like, two of them were like, yeah, of course. I'm like, wait, what? So, <laughs> like, what is going on? But then one of them, she said, yeah, that's when we lived in North Dakota. That's why we had to plug our cars in. I'm like, well, I get that. but That's so I mean, crazy. I have a plug, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so what do you do? Was, I, because... Because I was going to play Tulsa last night, show up this morning there at the radio station, and then tomorrow night I play uh, near Houston, Texas, an acoustic show, and then on Saturday morning shoot a, a music video for my worship record, and then I was going to drive straight back to Des Moines, pick up my family, and then we take off to New Mexico for, uh, like, we do a week of acoustic dates out and around back through Utah and Wyoming and Nebraska home. Anyway, I was going to take our our car from Des Moines down to Tulsa to Dallas, whatever, because it'd be so much cheaper on gas. And that's why I was going to leave the van for my wife in case she needed it, even though she doesn't really love driving a giant 15 passenger van, you know, around town. That's weird. Uh, anyway, I went out to start it and nothing was happening. So I'm like, whoa, what's going on? I had jumper cables on that thing for an hour and a half and it would never even get to where it would turn over. So I'm like, something else is wrong. I took the battery out by the way, it's three degrees, so I of kept course. having to run in the house to keep from freezing to death. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, eventually I just took it and to have it tested, and they're like, uh, this is frozen solid. We can't do anything with this until it thaws out. I'm like, wait, what? So do they, like, it pop it in the microwave or something? <laughs> What's that? Do they pop it in the microwave to thaw it out? You know what? Someone last night at church said that. <laughs> Why don't you just microwave it? I'm like, oh, really? Like, and someone a else battery? Is, you know, they have a setting for that. I'm like, yeah, it's called bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh I don't know goodness. if I would be comfortable with that, but that's not something that Texans can wrap their head around. That's, yeah, we, we've got a high of 70 tomorrow, so so I'm trying to wrap my mind around a battery freezing solid. Well, so I'll I, be driving through that. My plan is to leave tonight at midnight. I'm driving from Des Moines straight down to Houston. I hope to make it there by 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon to play the acoustic show tomorrow night. Awesome. So, yeah, we've got, yeah. I mean, you, you have so much going on right now. You've got the the, uh, the worship album coming out. You've got a spoken album coming out. Is it kind of, because is your approach different when you come to a worship album versus coming to a spoken album? You know, in the end, it's kind of like, what in the world can I do to make this song at least decent? Like, that's my whole thing of, like, you know, of, of writing and recording, you know, rough demos on my laptop. And, and however, it, the worship record kind of came about different because I had started doing more and more acoustic shows or guest worship at churches. And, you know, there were some songs that I didn't even send to the guys when we were writing Illusion. Because they were just, they were to worship, you know, okay. and like a spoken record, it, it kind of, it appeals to Christians, non-Christians, whatever. So the songs aren't like just drenched in, you know, worship lyrics or whatever, but yeah, they're there, you know, and, and for the average listener, a spoken fan would be like, dude, I totally have to worship to that, I love it, whatever, because they, they understand more about what we're doing. Yeah. And then people who are non-believers hearing it, they're like, man, I love that band, that's cool, you know, and it's, it's crazy to hear an atheist talk about how much they love our music and like love the positive message man it's cool they might not understand it's straight up about jesus you know and so that's awesome it's kind of a cool situation but my church um they I, for whatever reason they asked me to 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 play offering on one of the saturday and sunday services and we we have on average i think there's five services that i'm like okay cool i'll play it and I played a song called Worship You, which was the first worship song that I'd actually completed. 
and it was to do guest worship at a church in Louisiana, super short notice. Like, I finished it that morning because I, I wasn't done with it, you know? I was like, oh, maybe I could play this. And so I did, and it, it went well. I actually was able to make it all the way through the song without slaughtering it, and so <laughs> that was cool. And then my church started asking me to play more often, so about, you know, I guess maybe three times a year. So I would, I would write a song specifically for that service. Interesting. And so it put pressure on me to actually finish worship songs, and so I'm like, this is, this is the best thing that could have happened, because I would have been just focusing on either just touring or writing spoken songs. And so it was really cool how it came about with the worship record. Now, the spoken record's kind of a, a different breed, because it's not, it's not the first spoken record, therefore there's a little bit of pressure on it to, yeah. to be decent you know where at least a worship record it's it's my first record on my own so no one knows what to expect and so i, I don't know i'm not saying that there wasn't a little bit of pressure for that but my wife told me it's like wait you you are in a band you guys have written seven albums worth of music this is what you do don't let pressure get in the way just do what you normally do i'm like oh okay <laughs> It's kind of a freeing, and so we are. We're actually going to debut one of the the new songs off the new album in, in uh, just a few minutes after we finish up here. Uh, it's called "Breathe Again," and it is. It, it reminds me a lot of kind of what you guys were doing on on Last Chance to Breathe, which is one of my favorite albums. You guys did was that kind of was there kind of a, a thought of like this is the sound that we're going for? Or is that just kind of the way it happened? It's just what happened. Okay, you know, like it was just one of those. There are times when you you write a song and you're more intentional about you know the the direction you want it to go because you want to make a record that's cohesive but yet goes somewhere. Like Illusion, we have some of the heaviest stuff we've ever done, but yet like Calm the Storm is it's a, a ballad. Yeah, you know, it's one of the you know, and that's a song where it's like some people don't realize how that's a that's a worship tune. You know, and it so really is. They don't really get it when they first hear it because they're normally probably hearing it. Um, either in passing on the radio, and they're just like, oh, cool, I haven't heard this song, whatever. Uh, or they bought the record, and they're already trying to process all the heavy tunes and then the mid-tempo songs, and then when they get to Calm the Storm, they're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't expect that to be on here or whatever. <laughs> so, it, like, Breathe Again was, literally, we had just started kind of throwing around some ideas. Um, our guitar player and I, Scoop, he's, he's new to the band. He wasn't on the last records at all. And, uh, we're just kind of sending ideas back and forth, kind of talking about what what do we want to do? And I was like, man, there's no guidelines. There's no, we can't do this. Here's what we can do. Here's what's worked in the past. Like, let's write a record that, you know, we're happy with, that's sound music that we want to write, and hopefully it's something that spoken fans embrace, and it's something that new fans who have never heard of us um, can maybe actually enjoy. And so, I mean, we did. We had in our mind, like, what kind of a, what about a, kind of a, a heavier 30 seconds to Mars type of thing, you know? And that was kind of just our starting point. I'm not sure that that song sounds anything like that, but <laughs> it was just, you know, Scoop sent me the music, and I just did a couple different versions of it. And then our the, the guy that's producing the record, a guy named Cameron Mizell, uh, he just sent me an email that just put, I love this one. And so I'm like, <laughs> okay. And so I guess... All right, because I normally only just write. I write a verse, a pre-chorus, and a chorus, and I send it to the guys to see if I'm even on the right direction, yeah. lyrically and you know, melody-wise, because they've already sent me the music. And uh, yeah, that was all I heard. Yeah, I love this one. I'm like, okay. So when we hit the studio, he's like, cool. Let's start with the chorus. I'm like, okay. I was just wondering if he was going to have me change stuff or <laughs> rewrite it or whatever. And so we just we literally. The way that Scoop and I wrote the song is the way it was recorded, and it was really crazy because it, it was something that seemed right because it wasn't forced. And so it was really cool. Like, it was, for, for it to especially be the first single or the first song that was completed off the new Spoken Project, it was kind of uh, a sigh of relief, to be honest. That's awesome. And once again, on the phone with Matt Baird of Spoken. Do you have uh, do you have release dates for the, the Worship album and the Spoken album, or are those still kind of up in the air? Um, as far as the Worship album, I'm supposed to have mixes this week to kind of go through and make final notes on, you know, what's going on or what I, what I would like to see different, which is another thing that's weird for me to have complete control over, you know, yeah. what I want to hear. That's strange. Because normally there's... You know, at least three other opinions from a band member, and then you know, with management, they they have their ideas of what 
oh man, I really like this part. I like how loud the guitars are on this, whatever. So right now, it's it's literally up to me once I get the mixes as far as the worship record goes of, of what else I want changed. And, you know, and maybe I'll get it and, you know, my wife and I will listen through it and we're like, yeah, cool, let's do it. And then I'll just, I'll have them, you know, pressed. And I'm hoping that the worship record is out by by April 1st. I say out by meaning in the hands of the people who have pre-ordered it because I I haven't talked to any labels about it at all. So yeah. right now I'm just doing it all uh, on my own. Um, but so April 1st for the worship record, we actually hit the studio in Phoenix, Arizona on April 5th to record the spoken record. Um, so, I mean, you know, we're hoping that it can be out. The spoken record can be out by, you know, August, mid-August, maybe, something like that. We want it to be a quick turnaround for sure. Awesome. Well, definitely exciting to hear from you, and we'll be debuting that new one in just a few minutes. Matt, thank you so much for catching up with us today. No, thank you guys for doing it. Thanks for caring. Thanks for being cool with uh, doing the, the call-in since I couldn't make it there. And, uh, yeah, I, I really do appreciate it. And anyone listening, thank you, too, as well.